1998 Mazda 626 with no pinch rails. This guy wants a clutch. I told him to junk it. He won't listen. He says he ain't got no money. He's got he's got money for a clutch, but he doesn't have money to junk it. Kind of sad deal. Hey, check this out. You ever see brake fluid look like that? Oh wow. Wow, fancy. 13 millimeters. These are tens. Got a couple 17 millimeters I'm gonna take off here. That'll lift up this bracket of wiring. 10 millimeter here. That's the ground wire on this cheesy metal bracket. There's a speed sensor wire back here too I want to unplug. Another speed sensor wire right here. Yeah. There's a clip for this slave cylinder hose. I gotta get off. A couple 12 millimeters for this slave cylinder. I'm just gonna pull this out of the way. Just as a precautionary measure I'm gonna duct tape this piston down to make sure it doesn't fall out or do anything stupid. Push it all the way in. This is a 17 millimeter here on this mount. Well, if I'm lucky I can put a jack underneath the transmission and jack it up just a little bit. To, gotta pop this bolt out of here. And it's a big ass fuel filter in my way. 10 millimeters on this fuel filter. Okay, we got that bolt out. More 17 millimeters on here. There's one more 17 millimeter hiding back here for this mount. Ew, that's disgusting. What the fuck is all that? Looks like I got a couple of starter bolts here. These are 14 millimeter. These bell housing bolts are 19 millimeter. You're going to need an engine support bar to support the rear of the engine somehow. This is how I did it. Because I got, I don't know, I just get creative. Got some vice grips to keep it from sliding up and down and put a chain around this. This, um, it's a factory lifting bar. I'm going to get these axles off next. These are inch and a quarter. These pinch bolts are 14 millimeter. And uh, it's stripped out. Fucking junk. That's what I. Uh, Long it chisels for getting off nuts that suck. You can't work on a Ford without chisels, man. I always like this old shit. I cut on both of these strut bolts, but a lot of times when you unbolt them and bolt them back up, it throws off the alignment on the car. Bitches. Now on this uh, passenger side axle for the life of me, I can't get the dang thing out of here. 
this thing won't come out. I've tried pulling on it and air hammering it and whatever. So you can get a wrench up here and loosen this nut up or this bolt. There's three bolts for this. I'm going to take them all out. That bolt's goofy. These are recessed down inside the block, so you can only get it out this far and then it it hits the axle. And then I just took a pry bar and pried it out of the hole. Now I'm going to try to pound this thing out of here. Ugh. I'm getting somewhere. Here, I think I can get this now. There's a bunch of 17 millimeters here, six of them. Fourteen millimeters here. I'm gonna leave this engine mount. These are 17 millimeters. A little eight millimeter action here. Shift rods here is a 12 millimeter. 14 millimeter here. One more bolt for the starter, 14 millimeter. Three 17 millimeters for this mount. And a crab apple from the squirrels. Got a 19 millimeter here. The 14 here. There's a 14 millimeter back here. I'm going to get with a wrench. 12 millimeter here. There's one more 19 millimeter buried up in here. Right now, that transmission's just dangling in the breeze. The only thing holding it up is the input shaft. I got a transmission jack under here. It's kind of haphazardly supported. I'm not really concerned about it. I just want the thing out. Pry it from underneath a little bit. Something happened. 14 millimeters on this pressure. And he was running on the rivets. There weren't nothing left of that. I wonder where them springs are. They must have fell out. These flywheel bolts are 19 millimeter. Well, the machine shop always charges to take these dowel pins out. If you want to save a little money if you're doing this job, you can take a claw hammer. And take them out just like that. I'm going to find the right size socket to get this bearing out of here. It'll be getting a new pilot bearing too. Crunchy. If your Ford Mazda axle doesn't come apart, just try a retarded sandwich. It's not working. The retarded sandwich is not working. That's an incredible amount of force right there. I'm bending my bolts. Bullshit. Jesus, wow. Okay, Mazdas and Fords are junk. I'm thoroughly pissed off. This axle won't come apart. I'll get this bolt out of here. Fuck you, I'm going to put this thing in and I'm going to get a new bolt. Probably one that's a little shorter. I'm going to stick it right in here after I put the thing in. And tighten it down. Oh, 
Well, there's a hole here. You want to line up with the hole on the crankshaft. Put some red Loctite on these bolts too. These get torqued to 60 foot-pounds. I'm using a 65 pound torch stick because I'm lazy. Now usually a pilot tool isn't good enough because it'll lock around this much. So what you want to do is stick your fingers up in between the clutch and the pressure plate and make sure you can feel a little lip on the pressure plate and the clutch and make sure it's the same all the way around. That's about right. You want to make sure it slides in and out really nice. It falls right in there. Then you just want to tighten these down nice and gradual like a little at a time. You want to final torque all of these at 25 foot-pounds. I did put Loctite on these too. I'm just going to double check it. Make sure my disc didn't move in here. I'm going to put the throw bearing in next. You might wonder why I don't clean all of this out. Get it all nice in there. I'll tell you why. Because I don't feel like getting cancer. There's already clutch dust all over the place. I don't need more. I'm just going to wipe this off just a little bit. They give you grease with the clutch kit. If you get some janky clutch kit and they don't give you grease, um, I got Honda Urea grease that works really good. You just want to put a little bit on the forks. Put a little bit on the, the yoke here where it's going to slide. Put a little bit on here too just, just to help it when you assemble it. You don't need a lot. I just put a little bit on the, the beginning of the grooves for the clutch just because. Pretty much should leave it dry, but a little bit isn't going to hurt anything. There's a little groove in here. kind of holds the grease. You want to fill up the inside of that groove up with a little bit of this stuff. Again, don't need to get too carried away. Out with the old and with the new. There. Now before I put this oil leaking carcinogen back together, I want to just take a visual and just make sure nothing is in my way. I see this wiring is probably going to piss me off. So I'm probably going to take a bungee cord and just pull this up out of the way. Other than that, I think everything's going to go in. If you're going to use a regular jack, have fun trying to get this thing up here because there's no real good flats on this whole transmission. It's crap the way they built this thing. So this is how I got it. I got it, I got it so these pads just keep it from moving back and forth and forward and back and I put two 2 by 4s underneath it like that. And that's uh, That should work. I hope. Just got to make sure it's level all the way around and square to the world. I'm going to start a couple of bolts because I think I can. I heard that. I think it popped in. If you can turn these in by hand. I got I got the 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 alignment pins are almost all the way lined up. It's really 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 close. If it don't feel right, you don't want to be forcing the damn clutch and the pressure plate and the pilot bearing. This stuff has got to fall in on its own. You can't be forcing it.
this joke of a half hole, I found an exhaust stud and I screwed it in there and put a nut on it. It's it's almost it's almost flush with the nut, the stud. I'm going to put some gear oil in it because it probably hasn't had any in it for a gazillion years. This is the fill plug for it. Put some 7590 in here. I know it needs some because I took this thing out and nothing came out of it when I removed the transmission. Huh. I just dipped a zip tie down that far and it's dry as a bone. Probably got original fluid in it. Oh, there's something in there. There's a little something in there. I like going an inch below the hole. I don't want to fill it all the way up. It's right up to the hole. I already started this and ran the clutch on the hoist. Just went through a few gears. It seems like it's going to work. So I'm going to put some tires on this and take this for a drive. I think I'm done. Okay, bye.